Now before we start this question, I would encourage you to sketch a diagram. So make it quite large. And uh, so we've got our particles A and B, one metre off the ground. Now let's just look at the forces acting on A. We know it's got a mass of 0.4 kilograms, so therefore its weight's going to act downwards. We'll mark that in then. Its weight is going to be mg 0.4g newtons. As far as the weight of B goes, its mass is 0.3 kilograms, so its weight is going to be 0.3g newtons. So 0.3g newtons there. Now when it comes to the tensions in the string, the tension acts upwards on both of these and that tension is exactly the same. We'll call it T newtons. It's exactly the same because we're told the pulley is smooth. If it weren't smooth then these tensions would be different. We've also got to put in the accelerations. We're done with the forces now acting on each particle. We need to put the accelerations on. Now for particle A it's accelerating downwards. We'll just put a double arrow there. It's accelerating downwards because we've got uh, more weight acting downwards on this side. We'll call it A, A meters per second per second. And B will accelerate upwards with the same acceleration as we've got down here. We're often asking questions why that's so. And it's because the string is inextensible. It doesn't stretch. So as soon as A starts to move down, B will start to move up. So how are we going to work out then the tension and the acceleration? Tension in part A, acceleration for part B. Well, as it turns out, I'm going to most probably end up working the acceleration out first because this is a very standard problem. And what we do with problems like this is we look at each particle in turn and we resolve in the direction of motion. So if I was to, say, consider A, and I would suggest you always tell the reader what particle you're working with, because it's moving downwards, resolving the direction of motion, so it's downwards. So we're looking at the resultant force equals mass times acceleration. And the resultant force downwards is going to be all of the 0.4 g minus, because this acts in the opposite sense to what we've got our arrow acting, so it's minus t. That's our overall force acting on A downwards. So it's equal to the mass times acceleration. The mass, remember, is 0.4, not 0.4g. So it's 0.4 times the acceleration A. So we've got two unknowns here. So we can't solve it for T or A at the moment. So let's just put it on hold and call it number one. Now we do much the same for particle B. We consider B. So let's just put that down, consider B. But for this one, what we do is because B is moving upwards, we resolve upwards in the direction of motion. So what is the resultant force upwards? Well, we've got all of T acting upwards. We've got the weight acting downwards, so that's going to be minus this time because it's in the opposite sense to our arrow here. So minus 0.3 g, and that's our resultant force. And that equals the mass times acceleration. The mass is 0.3, and the acceleration is a, plus a, because in the sense here. Let's call this equation 2. Now normally with these questions, they ask us to find A first and then we go on to work out T because finding A is very easy when you've got equations like this because all you've got to do is simply add them. And by adding them, the T's would be eliminated. So if we did find A first, then we could substitute it back into one of these equations to get t. So I'm going to do it that way around because it's going to be quicker in the long term than 
working out t first of all. So what I'm going to do is equation 1 then plus equation 2. Equation 1 plus equation 2 gives us, well, minus t and t. Well, that cancels. So we've got 0.4g minus 0.3g, so therefore we have 0.1g. And that's going to equal 0.4a plus 0.3a, which is 0.7a. Now if we divide both sides by 0.7, we therefore have that a equals 0.1g, all divided by 0.7. And that works out exactly at 1.4 metres per second per second, taking g to be 9.8. So we've got 1.4 metres per second per second. Now to get t, all we need to do is substitute a equals 1.4 then into either equation 1 or 2. I'm going to go into equation 2 and rearrange it. t will equal 0.3a plus 0.3g. So if we just say sub a equals 1.4 meters per second per second into 2, okay, and rearrange then what we got is that t equals 0.3 multiplied by a 1.4 plus the 0.3g plus 0.3g and if you work that out you end up with exactly 3.36 newtons so when it comes to the first answer the tension is 3.36 newtons and then in part B we're asked for the acceleration which is 1.4 meters per second per second. All right.